And that, kids, is the true story of how I met your mother. What? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the biggest jaw-dropping bombshells from the How I Met Your Mother gang and company. If you're not caught up, there will be spoilers. I'm not ready for this. Number 10. Robin's Secret Past In this Season 2 episode, Robin mysteriously reveals that she doesn't go to malls. Why is that? Well, could it be because she doesn't want to be recognized by fans of her more <clears throat> mature projects? Or could it be because she was once married in one? She's not married. Robin hates marriage. Because she already got married at the mall. No, because before Robin moved to New York, she... What was she doing? Okay, neither Barney nor Marshall's suggestions sound that plausible, but we never would have guessed the real reason either. In one of arguably the best and most hilarious surprises in the series, we learn that Robin was a Canadian teen pop star called Robin Sparkles. For a whole year, I lived off of Orange Julius's and Wetzel's pretzels. This reveal laid the groundwork for two iconic How I Met Your Mother running gags. Also, much like the gang, we can't get enough of Let's Go to the Mall. Everybody come and play. Throw every last care away. Wow. Let's go to the mall. <laughs> Number 9. Lily and Marshall Break Up. Lily and Marshall's once rock-solid bond begins to crumble as Lily contemplates the road not taken. But this is Marshmallow and Lily Pad. They can get through anything, right? I'm gonna wait around for three months just to have my heart ripped out. Marshall, I love you. Can you promise me that that's not gonna happen? Sadly, no. Ted returns home ecstatic after officially getting together with Robin, only to find Marshall alone and devastated, holding an engagement ring. We were shook. Still, we knew these two were meant to be, and it would only be a matter of time until they were back together. However, what did surprise us was Barney's instrumental role in making that happen. You and Marshall belong together. The two of you have something that most people search their whole lives for and never find. I know you love him, and if you knew what he was going through right now, you wouldn't be here for one more second. I bought you a ticket home. Still, you'd think Marshall would remember some of that pain when he accepted the judgeship role without talking to his wife first. You still haven't told her. No. This is face-to-face -face news. Good luck with that, Your Honor. Number 8. How Barney Became Barney a brush with the past reveals that Barney hasn't always been the suit-wearing, catchphrase-spouting, whiskey-drinking, laser-tag-playing womanizer we came to know throughout the series. Dude, that's your G-friend? All right, high five. Sorry, I only give high twos. <laughs> what is? In fact, he couldn't have been more opposite. Still, throughout the episode, he offers snippets of his history, shedding light on the events that shaped the man he eventually became. All this granola business, it was just a phase. Greg's older. He's successful. He buys me all this cool stuff. <laughs> but I love you. But he has a boat. Honestly, it's hard to decide what's more surprising, witnessing such a different side of him or observing his transformation. The surprises don't end there. In the final season, he unveils the last piece of his intricate revenge plot against the guy his girlfriend left him for. But this is pretty much revenge for stealing my girlfriend. See, that day I vowed I would do everything in my power to track you down, gain your trust, and then destroy you. Oh, and we finally learn what he does for a living. Number 7. Barney Meets His Dad Barney yearns for a father figure so badly that, for a while, he allows himself to believe that Bob Barker is his dad. Of course, deep down, he knows that's not true, and considers reconnecting with his actual dad. Guys, I'm pretty sure that's not Louise, but I can't be certain someone introduce yourself. Just as we thought this storyline would forever remain a loose end, who should show up at his door? Barney, I... I got your letter. Dad? 
We believe we can speak for all of us when we say we were astonished when Jerome Whitaker not only re-enters Barney's life, but is revealed to have been known as Uncle Jerry during Barney's upbringing. As they begin building a relationship, Barney grapples with the realization that his half-siblings had the childhood he longed for. You're just some lame suburban dad. Why does that make you so mad? Because if you were gonna be some lame suburban dad, why couldn't you have been that for me? Number six. Robin learns she can't have kids. And then the doctor said a bunch of medical stuff that, well, the gist of it was this. I can't have a baby. Robin has made it clear that she does not see kids in her future. But as she learns in a devastating blow, there's a big difference between not wanting them and being unable to have them. I guess it's, it's just nice knowing that you, you could someday do it if you changed your mind. But now, all of a sudden, that door is closed. Still in an unexpected twist, we see her narrate the story to her two children, making us believe that fate reopens that door somewhere down the line. But in another jolt, we learn that these kids are just a fabrication of Robin's imagination as she processes this life-altering news. No one getting in the way of my career. If you want to know the truth of it, I'm glad you guys aren't real. If the shock that Robin can't have kids felt like a gut punch, this moment felt like the kind that knocks you to your knees. Number 5. Stella Leaves Ted at the Altar We all had opinions on Stella and Ted's relationship, but let's face it, their engagement and wedding were rashly impulsive decisions. Nora, don't worry. We got this. That's right. We'll take over your wedding, pay you back for everything you spent. Ted and I will get married this Sunday. So we'd say that, yeah, this would have been a good time to pull out the old intervention banner. Perhaps if they had, they would have saved Ted the heartache of being stood up on his wedding day. But when you think about it, the clues were already there. After all, isn't it Stella who said something about exes and unresolved feelings? Having exes around, I don't know, it brings up unresolved things. How do you know that that spark won't come back with your ex sitting up there? On the big day, Ted is left heartbroken, holding Stella's note while his friends rally around him. And where is Stella? Sailing away from Shelter Island with her ex, Tony. Seriously, kids, never invite an ex to your wedding. Number four, Barney becomes a father. In the last episode, Barney tries to one-up his perfect week as seen in season five with a perfect month. As the month comes to a close, the final woman, or number 31 as he calls her, drops some life-changing news. That last girl, number 31. Oh, that's a pretty name. What is that, French? <laughs> She's pregnant. Now, the last time Barney found himself in this predicament, he celebrated the false alarm by inventing a new holiday called Not A Father's Day. But he sure won't be celebrating that anymore. Given Barney's, let's call it, lifestyle choice, it seemed inevitable that this could happen at some point. You are the love of my life. What we couldn't have seen coming, though, is Barney's mind-blowing transformation from the first moment he lays eyes on his daughter. And everything I am? is yours <laughs> forever. Number three, Barney's getting married, and you'll never guess who the bride is. Barney and Robin hooking up wasn't initially on our How I Met Your Mother bingo cards, but once they did, their relationship became a roller coaster of twists. After their breakup, both move on to other relationships, and Barney's even getting married. The last wedding I ever thought I'd be at. What do you think of this tie? But to whom? Nora? Quinn? Hands up if you saw Robin as the blushing bride, because we didn't. And our jaws hit the ground faster than anyone could say I do. But how did we get here? Well, it was all one big elaborate final play ending with an engagement. Robin Scherbatsky, will you marry me? We imagine we also weren't the only ones who'd barely scooped their jaws back into place before the couple dropped them again by announcing their divorce. And when we got married, I made a vow that I would always tell you the truth. We got divorced. 
Number two, the mother's feet. Apologies if we're rehashing old wounds, but you have to admit it, this plot point was pretty shocking, even more so when we learned that the clues had been there all along. What mother is gonna miss her daughter's wedding? Okay. No. Come on. For nine seasons, we followed Ted through the highs and lows of love, expecting it all to culminate with his dream woman, the mother of his children. Instead, they introduced Tracy, make us root for her and her relationship with Ted, and then… Even then, in what can only be called the worst of times, all I could do was thank God. Thank every God there is, or ever was, or will be and the whole universe. Adding to the blow, we learn that for a show called How I Met Your Mother, Ted's story isn't even really about the mother. Dad, we love Aunt Robin. Whenever she comes over for dinner, you guys are so obvious. <laughs> Come on, Dad. Mom's been gone for six years now. Love it or hate it, many fans are still reeling from the sting of this last-minute twist. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The Runaway Bride. We were all rooting for Ted and Victoria, but we weren't expecting that. If the coffee beans are good enough, you really don't need- Why are you in a wedding dress? Well, I'm sort of supposed to get married today. Barney gets hit by a bus. An unexpected turn swerves Ted and Barney's friendship onto a new path. I mean, I mean. <laughs> Barney's everlasting second. Just as we thought the stars had aligned for Barney and Robin. For Barney, the second that would never end was this one. Lily discovers Ted plans to leave New York. Ted hopes his heartache will be a breeze in the Windy City. You're not leaving because you think the love of your life isn't in New York. You're leaving because you think she is. And this time next week, she'll be married to your best friend. Tracy's boyfriend dies on her 21st birthday. Her whole world is rocked, and we were pretty shaken too. Yes, this is she. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Marshall's Dad Dies In one of the cleverest How I Met Your Mother episodes, the writers sneakily included a countdown leading to the titular bad news. Given that Lily and Marshall are dealing with potential fertility issues, we anticipated it would revolve around that. And so now I'm just scared that we won't be able to give you a grandchild. Oh, Marshall. Hey, we don't care about that one bit. And if you guys want kids, there are other ways. So as the countdown reached zero, we held our breaths in anticipation of a major revelation. Little did we expect it to be as devastating as it turned out to be. Something's happened. Um, your father, he had a heart attack. He didn't make it. How I Met Your Mother superfans might be aware that Jason Siegel didn't see the final version of the script before filming, so he had no idea what he'd be responding to. His reaction is totally improvised, making his shock as authentic as ours. I'm not ready for this. <laughs> Which How I Met Your Mother moment still has you shook? Don't wait for it. Tell us in the comments. Are you okay? Of course I'm not okay! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.